the problem is this could open up other fissures, other holes, other gaps, and not, you have not just one leaking fire hydrant of oil, you have many leaking fire hydrants of oil, all of which have to be capped, all of which have, have to have a top kill, and we start all over again. All right, back live, everybody. That's our science guru, Mikio Kaku, urging against the use of a nuclear device, but well, let me just say, an atomic bomb to seal off the well that since about noon today has been gushing oil absolutely unhindered as those uh, robotic submarines working a mile deep have removed the old leaking cap in the hopes that another bigger, better cap will succeed with the six or seven previous caps failed. Why not cut to the chase? What are we going to do if this new cap or even those long-awaited relief wells don't work? Here's Craig on whether or not the time has finally come. Geraldo, with 60,000 barrels of oil still spilling into the Gulf, many people are looking for extreme options to seal that well, one of them being to nuke it. I'm with Milo Nordyke. Milo is actually one of the masterminds behind U.S. research into the use of peaceful nuclear options. Milo, do you really think it's possible to nuke that well and seal it? Yes, I would say on the experience we have and the experience the Russians have, it certainly looks like it would be quite possible. The government estimates as much as 100 million gallons of oil have spewed into the Gulf of Mexico since the explosion and fire of the Deepwater Horizon rig on April 20th. The history of BP's failed attempts to plug the well has some people talking about extreme measures to stop the spill. Former President Bill Clinton. Unless we send the Navy down deep to blow up the well and cover the leak with piles and piles and piles of rock and debris, which may become necessary. How would you actually consider going about putting a nuke into the ocean bottom to seal that well? Well, you're not putting it in the ocean bottom. You're putting it 10,000 feet below the ocean bottom. Um, and uh, you would do that in a well, something like the relief wells. Nordyke says unlike conventional explosives, a nuke would fit into the limited space of a relief well. The device has to be designed to withstand high pressures and, and high temperatures because that's what we're dealing with here. Nuclear explosives for large projects that are simply not feasible with conventional methods. They call their program Plowshare. <laughs> Nordyke is a veteran of Operation Plowshare, a team of American nuclear physicists from the Lawrence Livermore National Lab in California, who during the Cold War actually conducted nuclear tests for practical use of the devices, like digging a new Panama Canal. Rio Blanco was uh, three explosions at six, seven thousand feet, and uh, and uh, very, very uh, similar to the depth that we're talking about for. For this. The Russians claim they used nukes successfully four out of five times to close out of control wells, like this one in Uzbekistan, that burned for three years until it was put out with a massive explosion. The camera feels the impact of the detonation. Milo visited the site. Now, is this diagram what a nuclear device would look like exploding underground and pushing this pipe over to the side? Is that what you're talking about? Well, that's exactly right. Ultimately, the rock that's above the cavity will start to collapse. And these are two books that you actually contributed to, and they're published by IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency, and they're the ones that actually monitor the use of nukes around the world, right? Yes, that's right. Nordyke believes insignificant amounts of radiation would leak into the environment, and the seismic disturbance would be minimal. Critics of this plan say that a nuclear device would do nothing but blow up the entire reservoir of oil and completely destroy the Gulf. Well, uh, you'll not be uh, in the reservoir, you're going to be above it. Do you think it's true possibility? I think it's a, certainly a possibility, but again, I have to say it's, it's if only if the relief wells fail uh, would you consider doing this as a last resort. I got goosebumps. <laughs> I really did. I, I thought know. about the fishing in the Gulf, Grandma's Beach, a Siesta Key, and I nuke, know. nuke over the horizon. What How do you think the chances of this could really happen? I, I think based on the fear of a nuclear accident, you know, radiation being released into the Gulf. Oh, and, that. And yeah, that, and also uh, creating an even greater environmental disaster, another oil well breaking as a result of the seismic wave or what have you, would make the chances slim to none. But, but we think the Russians really did it?
Yeah, well, Nordyke actually did a study, a 100-page study, and uh, found that four out of five experiments in uh, turning off the Soviet wells actually worked. Now, there are uh, Soviet uh, environmentalists say that this is all a lie and he was given improper information, but that's what he's found. Okay. Meet our expert. He's uh, Lieutenant Christopher Brownfield, a former nuclear submariner. He's an Iraqi war veteran. He's currently a nuclear policy researcher at Columbia University. Uh, Chris, welcome aboard. So, uh, so now, when President Clinton was talking about explosives, he was citing your op-ed pieces. Yes, that's correct. He was talking about using conventional explosives, not nuclear ones. So is that your solution, rather than a nuke with all of the emotional and physical and uh, environmental potential catastrophes, use just like stacks and stacks of C4, dynamite, nitroglycerin, whatever? Uh, yes, essentially. What, what I've been arguing for the last eight weeks, ever since May 16th, was uh, to use conventional explosives to seal off this well. and. The thing that's different about our situation now is that we have a lot more precise explosives and we have better technology than what the Russians had. So we shouldn't, it shouldn't be necessary to use uh, the wrecking ball. We could probably get away with a sledgehammer. Now, do you think that it is a failure of presidential leadership that the explosives option is not on the table, that's my specific question, and B, because it, if, if it was, it would be the United States Navy in charge rather than the United States Coast Guard or, or British Petroleum? Uh, well, I think there are two important failures in leadership here. One was with Energy Secretary Stephen Chu, who said that uh, the nuclear option was never on the table. I think they should have had it on the table, and they should have uh, learned how the Soviets did this, with the demolition from the side of the well. It, they could have realized, if they had looked at this, that it would be possible to seal off this well using conventional explosives and contemporary technology. Wait, wait, I want to stop you there. Are you saying, as Craig said, that the Russians did use this explosive technology but rather than nuclear, use conventional weapons, or was it nuclear in the case of the Soviet Union? Well, the Soviet Union did use nuclear weapons to seal this off, but I think that with our better technology, we're a lot more precise. We can drill right up next to the leaking oil well. The Soviets didn't have that technology. So with our better technology, we should be able to do this using conventional uh, explosives. Now, the other failure, I think, comes with President Obama, who was a little bit too trusting of the executives at BP, and they're a little bit too fearful of this... Uh, uh, greatly exaggerated threat of rupturing the oil reservoir. I think it's completely infeasible for any weapon, whether it's a 10 megaton nuclear weapon or conventional explosives, to rupture through a rock formation that's as thick as the Rocky Mountains are tall. Now, one thing that, uh, that Milo did tell me was that the reason that he says a nuke would work better is because you'd need a much smaller nuke in order to get down into the small area that you have down there. Conventional explosives, you would need massive amounts to go down to seal the well.